Hello and welcome to the Shepherd's Crook Podcast. Hope you guys are having a great day today. We're going to talk about something that I think is of critical importance. I'm going to have to use some vague language today, some coded language today, almost like I'm a missionary in a closed country or something like that. We're going to be talking about inoculations. We're just going to call it the shot, and we're going to address some things that I think most of you have been thinking through, especially if you have young children, and almost all of you have been thinking through over the last few years after the the COVID uh, mandates and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go through a couple resources, recommended resources, talk about some big things. And I'm not going to get down into the nitty gritty details and into charts, graphs, data, that sort of thing. But I am going to point you to places that you can find that. But first, just want to remind you of the intensive that's coming up May 16th through the 18th. Would love to have you there. I would love as many of you as possibly could come to be there. We, we have room for about 200 guys to be able to be at this intensive. That's what we hope it'll eventually grow into. It's a great father-son trip. It's a great trip just for men, for young men. If you don't have a family yet, this is a great way to just rub shoulders with some Christian men, some godly fathers, some godly husbands that can really just help you along the way of young manhood. And if you are a part of our church, then obviously we would love for you to come. If you have a church group, we would love for your church group to come. Please just come and be a part of this. It's a great trip. There's a lot of great conferences out there. This is not a conference, but there is going to be good teaching. A.D. Robles, Matt Reynolds, and I'm going to be jumping in on that as well. Would love for you to uh, take take in really all that this trip has to offer. We're going to be doing a strongman competition. We're going to have a grip strength competition, arm wrestling competition. We're going to be shooting some guns and doing some fishing. Overall, it's going to be a lot of fun. Also, would love for you to check out the Sons and Slaves podcast. And finally, just remind you of the Fruitful and Fearless podcast. Also, wanted to give a shout out to Duckworth, the company Duckworth. It is a great company. I'm going to be pointing people in that direction. They've got some really great gear made in America, sourced in America, and are wanting to do things the right way. They are building clothes that last for a lifetime that you can hand off. Everybody wants legacy pieces. Everybody wants legacy knives, guns, things that you can pass on to your children and grandchildren. Now you can go and buy some American-made products that you'll spend a little bit for but will last you for a very long time. So I want to encourage you to check out Duckworth, great company, doing some cool things. All right, let's go ahead and pray, and then we are going to dive into the content for today. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time. I ask for clarity. As I'm thinking through this information I'm wanting to give to everybody that's listening, help me to do it in a way that's helpful. Uh, help me not to, to be inaccurate. Help me to be accurate in what, what's said, and then help me to point people in the right direction to find more information and resources. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Today, I'm also going to be releasing, after this, a sermon that I preached at our church about the liberty of conscience, and it related to COVID stuff. You want to check that out as well as a complimentary resource to what I'm releasing right now. So in the podcast stream, as you look at this, if you just open it back up, there should be another resource right there behind, and it's about a 45-minute, I believe, sermon that I preached at our church a few years ago when we did the religious exemption forms for our church and provided those for people outside of our church as well. And I preached a sermon that went alongside of that, explaining why we did that. And then just, you know, dove into the scriptures of the authority of God's word over all of life, even as we're thinking through some of those things. Okay. I want to point you in the right direction. Joe Rogan has been mentioning this recently. It is a book on on shot or inoculation history, two books on inoculation history, and then I want to recommend a podcast. There are also other resources that you can find out there. And if you talk around the church enough of your uh, church and your friends, you're going to find some people, especially in 2024, who know about these resources, have read about these resources, and are really passionate about this. And they're passionate about this for very strong reasons, that there, there really is moral questions that rise to the surface when you're talking about uh, inoculation history, inoculation um, ethics and big questions that you need to be thinking through. If you're having children, we have decided to completely unashamedly do no inoculations for our children at all. And we believe based on the information that we have, that this is the morally right decision for our family. I don't want to impose in some on you some sort of legalistic thing, but I do want to challenge and challenge you and almost be legalistic about it because there are deep, deep moral issues about this that get into Christian ethics that you need to know about. And so these these books are going to give you information, and we we really, when people read this kind of stuff, they get passionate about it because they want to protect children, and they want to protect you, and want to give you the information that you need to make the best decisions that you can for your family. And so uh, these are recommended resources that really chart some very interesting things and compelling things that 
you may not be aware of about sanitation history in our country, about overpopulation of our, our cities in the 20th century and what happened from moving from a rural America to an urban America and what happens when you put massive amounts of people in cities that don't have infrastructures built for these massive amounts of people and the disease that ends up happening with people who are in close, pr close proximity without refrigeration and without proper uh, plumbing and those sorts of things, what ends up happening within that group of people. And what you'll see in the book, Dissolving Illusions, and this is another resource, Turtles All the Way Down, that you can dive into, is that there really is in inoculation history a one-way view of history that says the only way some of these historic diseases have been eradicated in our country is because of allopathic care, and it's because of inoculation, it's because of those advancements. And that's why, as a society, we've, we've got rid of uh, many of these diseases. And what this book does is really breaks down that narrative in such a phenomenal way. It gets into, san like I said, sanitation history and a lot of varying reasons and factors of, of uh, basically looking at history and understanding why we have got to where we have got today to uh, the 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 eradication of so many of these diseases and what are the various factors that play into that. And it's really complicated and layered when you look into it. It's not just a, an answer that Big Pharma puts out to you. Oh, the answer is just because of, of these inoculations. There's so much more to it. And I want to encourage you to get these resources. Joe Rogan has just mentioned that he's reading this book right now. It's very, very helpful. Another good resource is Rogan and RFK episode on Joe Rogan's podcast. I think you can actually get that now on not just Spotify. I think that's coming over to iTunes as well because I think you just read it as contract. You'll be able to search that, look that up, and find it. You should be able to look these up if you want to look these up. And I just want to encourage you, if you've not dove into this at all, please do because if the if COVID and the rushing to get as many medicines and shots into our bodies as we possibly can hasn't warned you or triggered you that something is a little off here, then I honestly, I don't know what will, but I think we are right for this discussion because people are so frustrated from the last three years, what we've experienced with the COVID push and these uh, shot pushes that have gone all the way down to children. And I think people finally have been asking questions. And in fact, when we went this this round with our children with, with uh, Oak and said, we're not going to do that, we didn't get nearly as much pushback from anybody. We weren't threatened with DCFS or anything like that. There wasn't nearly the pushback as there had been in the past because people are waking up to some of these issues. And I think it's important if you've not yet had these conversations, if you've not yet looked at material that I'm suggesting here, then it is time to do that because there are some serious things in our country that are happening. So I, I, some of the big picture things I just want to throw out to you to, to think through, okay? Um, I'm not a medical professional, obviously. I'm a pastor and I've been a churchman for years, and I'm just, I'm a cleric. I, I love God's people. I, that's what I do. I'm, I'm a pastor. I also, though, I do have a brain that tries to think through critically through the lenses of the scriptures, everything that's going on around us. And I think that's a requirement of pastors to be able to equip their people. And that's what we want to do as elders, to equip our people to think through the lenses of the Bible and see the world behind the Bible, not see the world and then see the Bible behind the world, but see the Bible, look through the Bible and see all of life through the context of the worldview that the Bible gives us. And then by doing that, we really can think crit critically. We can do a really good job with historical analysis. We can also look to the future and recognize where things are going. And those that are well acquainted with a biblical worldview are able to assess information in ways that, you know, people like the Gospel Coalition just can't. If you have a good, if you have a good biblical worldview and you rec recognize that the Bible is authoritative everywhere, even in the area of medicine, it's not a medical handbook in the sense that it teaches you how to do a surgery or brain surgery or something like that. But the Bible does help you think through a holistic view and understanding of what are we doing to be healthy and how do we assess the information that's coming in. The Bible gives us the Proverbs wisdom to be, to be able to do that. So it, it's not a handbook on how to be uh, the strongest man you can possibly be. It's not men's health or something like that. But the Bible does help us to think think critically through these issues. And I think that's why, you know, it, I would encourage you to to think through these things. Okay, so I'm not a medical professional, but I have a brain and I'm a pastor. I love the Bible and I try to have a biblical worldview. So here's some big big picture things that, that people will steer you away from and call you crazy and a conspiracy theorist about. Why is there so much autism in the world? Why is that the case? Go watch Del Big Tree's show, Vax, uh, vaxed watch that movie 
talk to people in your life or in your sphere. And if you'll just talk to a few people and ask around, you're going to find some parents in your community. You don't have to go far. You're going to find parents in your community that said, my child was completely normal until they got this, the, this regimented shot thing handed down from the CDC. And then all of a sudden, eye contact went away. The same story, story after story after story from parent and community after community. You don't have to go far. You probably know some parents that say, that, that would say, I know multiple parents that have said, I know for a fact, this is what happened to my child. And you hear these stories over and over again, and then it, they're so easily discredited by the by big pharma. They say, "No, you're crazy. That's not that's not happening." Here's our studies that we had have had done, and we have shown that these are safe and effective. And just like COVID and Moderna and Pfizer and everybody has their and, and Johnson and Johnson their studies to say, "Look, everything's good. These are safe and effective." And everybody repeats the mantra. Everybody repeats the mantra. Even your pediatrician. No, these are safe, safe and effective. Safe and effective. And then all these vaccine injuries that are not reported, they they get shoved under the rug, and the mantra gets repeated. These are safe and effective. These are safe, safe and effective. Why is it though that? Why is it that there are so many stories that are absolutely similar and, and autism has continued to rise like crazy? And if you begin to look into these, these studies, you realize that there is a mountain of evidence, not just a little bit, a mountain of evidence that RFK has been sounding alarm about that you can hear on, on Rogan, uh, Joe Rogan experience that these books are leading us into that are, are showing the data is there and we know what is going on and we know why these rates and these these chronic illnesses are going up and it's because this is happening to us and all the while the people that are doing it to us are saying these are safe safe and effective these are safe and effective these are safe and effective why has there been so much propaganda another big picture thing that i want you to think about uh, there is a thing floating around on the internet a while back about the brady bunch the tv show the brady bunch everybody in the show is getting the measles and they were having big measles parties like you do with chicken pox. You know, you, these these are things that you want to catch so you can get over it and get through it. And in that show, the the there was a contrast between the show just from about 50 years ago and the modern shows today that that propagandize people to think that measles is this thing that's destroying whole cities and going to destroy the country. And if you don't get, get your shots, then you're going to destroy and kill everybody around you. And it's the same kind of propaganda that we experienced with COVID, where people are saying, if you don't get this, you you know, you want to kill your grandmother kind of thing, or you want to kill everybody else's grandmother kind of thing. It's propaganda that is repeated, and it's mantras that are repeated and are caught, and people really believe this passionately because the medical professionals are telling you this, and that brings you to another uh, big, big alarm that goes off in your head. Since 1985, the government has given freedom to these pharmaceutical companies to develop vaccines and have no consequence for those who have been harmed by these shots or inoculations. So they have complete freedom to, and, and not only that, not only are they not going to get in trouble, they have complete freedom to do their own studies and hire their own doctors to do these test results to find if these are safe and effective or if these are somehow harmful. Now, you're telling me that you can trust a pharmaceutical company to run their own tests and their own studies and then present those tests and studies to their own company that goes back and tells them to the FDA and say, look, these are safe and effective. Here's the data. And that we're to trust all that. You see, I'm not a medical professional, but I do have a brain. And so do you think through this. Don't be stupid. And as you look at all the money and all the dollars and all the propaganda that goes into this, it's not hard if, if you have a biblical worldview to understand the heart is deceitfully wicked above all else. People are after dollars. They're after control. And this is a way to do it. Why are there no studies between, I mean, massive studies, not small studies, but why are there not controlled studies, huge controlled studies of vaccinated versus unvaccinated population? And what are the health results or the consequences from vaccination and non-vaccinated children? Why aren't those studies there? It, that it, The fact that there's no answer to that shows you that there's a problem. They don't care about children. The, the idea that the government is altruistic and cares about people is a lie that has to be rejected. They are evil, they are maniacal, they are godless, and they have their secularist, Satanist religion, and they do not care about the public health of people. You care about your child's health, you care about your church family's health a whole lot more than the government does. And so when you have that person that you think is just the crazy non-inoculation you know inoculation person in your church, it might be good to listen and maybe read a few things. And because they care about you, that person cares about you more than the government cares about you. So why aren't these studies there? These are big questions that, sh that, that the other side should have answers for. Well, they, they just should be there. But why aren't there those studies? 
Uh, we saw the COVID nonsense with the, the so-called inoculations that were a complete and total joke. Um, if you are not convinced that those are not safe and effective, I can't really help you. If you think that those were effective, then I can't help you. I just, you are, you are, you are so far deep into the system that you don't, you don't see, you can't see the forest for the trees because you've just bought the propaganda. So why would we trust anything from big pharma when there's so much money, there's so much control, and they're doing these controlled studies and saying, yes, they're safe and effective, give us billions and billions and billions of dollars and in cahoots with the government. Why should we trust them? And why should we trust them when they tell us, don't read Dissolving Illusions, don't read Turtles All the Way Down, don't listen to Joe Rogan, and don't listen to RFK, don't read his book, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. No, these are safe and effective. No, autism is not a result of this. We don't know why, but it's certainly not because of this. So why would we trust them? And that's the question I have for you. These companies are making millions, and they're making millions off the product, which is us. And I think it is incredibly important to think through vaccine or shot ethics. This is probably going to be canceled. This is probably going to be taken down, no, no doubt. Um, but what, what would be better? To have the information and then make a informed and biblical uh, decision. And I want you to follow up with this sermon that I preach at our church. It's going to give some of the information about how baby murder goes into vaccines. And these are ethical questions that you have to work through. And so instead of diving in all the information about these books, I just want to point you in the right direction. I would encourage you to get these, read these, and then really wrestle through these, especially if you're having children right now. Have the information, do the work to work through the material, and then make the best decision you possibly can. Watch Vax by Dale, Dale Big Tree. Listen to The High Wire. You can actually still get that on, on iTunes. And it's uh, it really is eye opening. It's it's mind blowing, and it really does matter. There is a, a biblical worldview that needs to come to bear on these issues, and I trust that you are wise enough, smart enough to work through this. And when people come along and say, "Oh, that's just crazy," what who's to who's to gain by saying that's crazy? Why are we not allowed to even have these discussions? Why aren't you allowed to work through these? Why are you embarrassed to tell people, "Yeah, we don't do that to our children"? Why why is it? It's because there's a propaganda machine out there that's making millions and billions of dollars. Okay, well, I hope this has been helpful. And I know that I did, like I said, I didn't intend to get into the nitty gritty details of this, but I did want to ask some big questions and then point you into the right direction. Thanks so much for listening. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.